Stan Jabalisco here, um, ex radio technician, current radio experimenter, and frequent user of a very specific tool that you can use to test components for thermal sensitivity. It's we call it freeze mist, or I uh, called it freeze mist back long ago when I was a technician in a laboratory, uh, well actually a workshop where we fixed ham radios imported from Japan. Freezer, freeze spray, I got this from Mauser Electronics and it has some kind of neat features. Uh, chemical components, tetrafluoroethane, well it's advertised as not uh, affecting the ozone layer. Uh, let's see, I, I don't see the list of features uh, that I saw in the other package, but uh, keep out of the reach of children. Well, it cools things down to approximately, chills to minus 62 degrees Fahrenheit in an instant. You spray something with that, and it will reduce the temperature in a hurry. And uh, thermal uh, intermittents are a big problem in the radio repair industry, at least they were back in the day when I was a technician. In, and I managed the service department at that place uh, in Miami, Florida, uh, to such a degree that we often reduced the backlog of radios to be repaired all the way down to zero and my uh, boss and the owner of the company and and um, my Elmer for life uh, was very impressed with that he thought that I was a miracle worker as their so-called chief engineer I was all because of that but it wasn't because of what we did to radios with it it was because of what we did to cockroaches with it. <laughs> you see, when the backlog gets down to zero and you have a bunch of technical radio people sitting around with nothing to do in a land where cockroaches are just about as abundant as red ants, that is to say very, you make some interesting discoveries in your spare time, and one of them was that you could freeze a cockroach, apparently dead in its tracks, in an instant. But if you weren't too overzealous and froze it to just the right extent, you could thaw it out again, and it'd start scurrying around again as it always has for millions upon millions upon millions of years before humans ever inhabited this planet and will doubtless continue to reign on Earth for millions of years after humans have killed themselves with weapons somewhat more deadly than this. This is non-toxic. It works very well on components like integrated circuits, transistors. We used to use them particularly on discrete components. If we suspected, for example, that a field effect transistor or a capacitor had a thermal sensitivity problem, we could tell right away by giving it a shot of tetrachlorofluoroethane, whatever that stuff is. It's non-toxic. It won't give you a headache. It's not like those insect sprays. And if you spray an insect for it, or uh, with it, for just a little while longer than enough to freeze it in its tracks, it'll it'll die, just like it would if you froze it with rain. Except it won't leave a sm a smudge on your window because it doesn't form a residue. It won't create an odor that gives you a migraine headache and can be potentially carcinogenic. It's a simple chemical that evaporates into the atmosphere 
and dissipates itself harmlessly after doing work that greatly entertained the technicians at the radio repair shop when we didn't have anything else to do. Is that aberrant or is that just little boys grown up to be men? Snakes and snails and puppy dogs tails, that's what little boys are made of. Add freeze mist and you got a big man on your hands. Stan Jibalisco signing off after what you can tell is a rather strange day in November here in the black holes of Dakota Toritary United States of aberrant minds. Until next time, don't get too cold this winter. This stuff would actually warm things up <laughs> here in the winter time. You could use it to thaw things out. Oh, oh, st shut up, Stanley, shut up. So long.